Greetings everyone, my name is Resh Ramasamy. I am a university lecturer, a PhD student, a published author and a developmental educator. Vlog 3 is devoted entirely to the developmental education or commonly known as DE's profession. I've received innumerable requests from people, professionals, students, caregivers and clients to create a vlog on the developmental education profession. There are three segments to this vlog. In segment one, I will define and provide you with an overarching understanding of the developmental education profession. In segment two, it's all about perspectives. We have four perspectives. The perspective of a long-standing DE and professional and academic associate professor, Caroline Allison, who currently works at University of South Australia. We have a Bachelor's of Disability and Developmental Education third year student at Flinders University. We have my client and a caregiver. This segment is all about providing you with a rich and deeper understanding from an academic and a practical vantage point about the DE profession. And in segment three, it's all about my journey of becoming a DE. So what exactly is a developmental educator? I've been asked this question plenty of times. So I think in the very first instance, I must provide you with an operational definition to define the profession itself. I therefore referred to my professional body, the Developmental Education Association, the DEAI, for a concise definition. And here it goes. The developmental educators are multidisciplinary disability specialists with expertise in fostering the skills, independence and quality of life of individuals with developmental and or acquired disabilities. As allied health professionals, developmental educators, commonly referred as DE, DE, have a practical approach and work holistically across the lifespan to address issues which may affect the function, the independence and social inclusion of individuals with disability, their families and their carers. At the baseline, all developmental educators either have a bachelor's or master's or both combined as the bare minimum. DEs find themselves in a multitude of roles ranging from providing behaviour support, counselling, advocating for clients, working in non-government organisations, government organisations, public, private, and the list just goes on. It just goes to show the richness of the DE profession in its entirety. Present moment, Flinders University is the only university that is offering bachelor's, master's and so on programs that have been approved by the DEAI. But there are also talks at the moment where there will be future programs approved by the DEAI that will give you a professional qualification of a developmental educator at other universities. Recently, I was talking to Associate Professor Caroline Ellison, who has advised me something amazing is arriving at the University of South Australia spaces and to simplify the DE profession for you in three tenets, three central tenets that I put together for you. The first tenet looks at the humanistic approach. How do we humanise 
a person we support? How do we take into account or we consider the human element of a person? But there are two concepts that illuminate on this further. Concept one refers to objectification. Concept two refers to subjectification. With this concept one, where we objectify the person, we render the person as incapable, incompetent, and needing support from us and being told how to lead their lives. With this concept over here, with subjectification, we render the person as an expert of their lives. We honour, respect and promote the person for who they are. So with the DE profession, we take interest, we immerse ourselves in the lives of the person and the families we closely support. We want to understand the person for who they are, not their labels, not their impairments, not their conditions. Whilst those labels, conditions, impairments are important in providing contextualised information, the most important element is the person themselves. We therefore understand the person as a human being not an object. The second tenet looks at working in collaboration rather than in isolation. DEs are fantastic collaborators. We work with a variety of stakeholders from paid, that includes professionals, other health professionals, and unpaid stakeholders, that includes the caregivers, family members, and etc. But we collaborate with the paid and the unpaid stakeholders and the person who is the client we closely support. We want everyone to come together and to work together for one aim, one purpose, one objective that is to enable the client or the person we closely support to have an improved quality of life. Therefore, we want to promote consistency, continuity and congruity across multiple stakeholders to enable a streamlined and a consistent approach. The third central tenet looks at a person's lifespan. We therefore want to understand a person's past experiences present experiences and the future experiences. Therefore, we want to ask three questions. The first question is, how did the person's past look like? The present question is, how is the person in the present moment? And the future is, how will the person's future look like? By asking these three questions, we can then start to understand the person in their entirety. So through the lifespan approach, we also borrow, we lean on to frameworks, theories, policies and practices. So for example, by using the theoretical frameworks of intersectionality, we begin to understand a person's minority status and what does it bring about. For example, a person with a disability who is LGBT identify with dual minority statuses. Therefore, by using an intersectional lens, we understand oppression in a much more complex and unique way. We might want to perhaps explore a person's experiences through the ecological systems theory where we understand a person's interactions with the physical environment through the micro, the meso, the exo, the macro and the chrono levels interaction. Or perhaps you would like to use a narrative approach where you engage in meaningful dialogue. And this is where I tend to use a counselling concept called the Tree of Life Method, 
where you engage in a non-threatening, non-judgmental counseling approach where you engage in deep dialogue with the person you support to capture and understand the person with the different life components. To summarize, there are three central tenets that relate to the DE profession. First is to humanize a person. Number two is to work in collaboration, then in isolation. And number three is to understand a person's lifespan through borrowing different frameworks, practices, theories and policies. What makes a developmental educator a developmental educator is the fact that we support all people with a disability, all impairments, um, our, and across all life domains from birth to death, except for the classroom, which is special ed. Um, and even in that space, we often work alongside teachers, we work in schools now, there's much greater recognition of DEs and the roles that we play for young people in school, particularly around transitioning from early childhood to primary school, primary to high school, and even from high school to employment. So there, there are certainly DEs that are appearing in those environments now, and even the education department is becoming a little bit more open to the fact that, you know, um, DEs have a role to play alongside special education and, and other teachers. So I think that the biggest point of difference is that we're not mutually exclusive to health. Um, and so we're really about someone having an ordinary life and having a good life. And if that means we're supporting health as part of the holistic way that we support someone, then that's fantastic. Biggest issue that I've come across since coming to UniSA as the Crossing the Horizon Professor of Ageing and Disability and it's not just about um, working in disability too. I think DEs have a significant role to play with people who are older, as well as people who identify as living with disability. And that's become really clear to me in my role here, is that there are DEs now in some of the big aged care providers like ACH, uh, Rest Haven and others actually employ DEs now. I think because of that multi-D kind of approach and that holistic approach that DEs take. We're really problem solvers. I mean, that's really what what we do. Um, one of our greatest capacities is to be creative and to solve problems. Um, under the NDIS and a sense that people want more choice and control um, over their lives, what they need are problem solvers to help them overcome those barriers. And if you look at the basic tenant of an NDIS plan, which is really what are the things you want to achieve to have an ordinary life? What are your aspirations and your dreams? What are the things that right now that are getting in the way of that? Whether that's your body not doing what it needs to do or there being some other barriers, there's skills that you need to learn. Um, that your NDIS plan is about saying, what are those aspirations and goals? What's stopping you achieving those right now? And what are the creative solutions we have to actually overcoming those barriers? And I think that that's, you know, that just epitomizes what a DE is, you know. A DE is the ultimate problem solver. And I think that because we work across all life domains, um, and even work with teachers and schools in the classroom, you know, we're really good at coming, coming up with solutions and working with, and bringing people together. You know, we're, we're the ultimate stirring pot, really. What being a development educator has offered me is a chance to work in play, a chance to work overseas, a chance to work in behaviour support, a chance to work in, uh, in leisure and sport, a chance to work in social housing, a chance to work in mental health. So I haven't had this one linear career um, I've, you know, over the last 25 or, or, or so years. I've had this really amazing, diverse career um, and I don't see that changing. I, I think the NDIS is creating, um, th there's a problem at the moment, particularly there's a problem nationally and a big problem in South Australia that there are not enough DEs. So my question is how do we convince year 12 students and school leavers that this is an amazing career and you know, you, you, if you choose to be a DE, you're just gonna have the most incredible 
career in a whole range of things that you want to do. So I think the NDIS has actually created recognition for our profession, but the DEs that are out there on the ground are the ones that have made it happen because they've been so damn good at what they're doing that it's left everybody else for dust and it's left people from other professions going, that's a DE, like how do I get more of them? So, you know, it's a big thank you to the DEs that are already out there working in the sector because you're creating such a demand for DEs um, in the future that how do we get the next generation to come in? So the future for DEs is nothing but spectacular. Hi, my name is Mac. I'm studying Bachelor's of Disability and Developmental Education at Flinders University. I am an experienced disability professional, worked in different capacities, in different roles such as uh, work uh, with clients with dis disabilities as well as as a vocational training practitioner in dis disability. Well, as you know, I have my previous history of work experience in disability and so I was looking forward to pursue my career further in disability and so this course has been the net this course has been the natural progression uh, in the field of disability so that's why I went in this course my ultimate approach is to provide a holistic and a person-centered approach to all those I would care for I learned lot of different spheres of uh, disciplines of uh, topics for for example there was neurological rehabilitation communication skills in addition to that there were other topics like disability employment and many other uh, research uh, topics like quantitative qualitative research and many other topics are uh, there were topics from psychology sociology physiology all those things uh, so what they did they developed a comprehensive understanding of different dimensions that we in our uh, professional career may have to encounter while working with clients with disabilities in addition to that i was also able to learn a lot during my various placements because being physically present there working with clients with disabilities at the same time under the supervision and guidance of their experienced professionals really helps to enhance your learning abilities and skills so what i will say in a nutshell is that it's a very diversified and multi-dimensional uh, resources source of learning which results in a comprehensive development of skills and abilities to work as a specialized disability professional. Rush takes time and care to understand the, the client's wishes. My school was a diehard Christian school, followed by the book, followed by the Bible uh, school. Um, the school did not want to appreciate uh, people that was bisexual, gay or transgender. Um, if the school found out, they would then say to the religious religious coordinator that we've got a sinner in the school, and they would go ahead and just treat them. They would go ahead and treat anybody that's LGBT as not a follower of God, which made me feel quite upset. I got bullied for it, and therefore I voluntarily left the school in 2018. Post school, Resh helped me understand more about my sexuality, helped me come out the closet to my family, and also helped me get into a different form of education with the Flinders Foundation Studies. Resh helped me by understanding my bisexuality and my autism by helping me understand basic life skills. As human beings, and I haven't felt with Resh like Aaron's felt with other therapists. We're just a chain. They have a certain number of people to see and they just see us. Resh is the all out person who 
treats us as individuals and he he feels like we do he's got the compassion for what he does and that comes through with him as a person um experiences from other professionals um i felt that we've been sometimes a hour but i've come out all confused the i felt the therapist has spoken to on a different level not come down to the the sort of a family level i felt we've been a number and as that therapist may have eight or nine or however many clients that it's all we're all treated the same i don't feel that we've had a real personal um had a personal level how do i say it? i just feel like that we've been in and we've talked and talked but the therapist would say the same to the next client as what they've said to us they've had a list of questions and we tried to um sometimes not understand what they've been talking about on a different level they haven't been able to come down to our family sort of level not having been involved in this sort of thing before or we as a family my husband and i and tracy aaron's mum feel and we know that resh has gone above and beyond everything that we thought he would do he's been there for all the trials and tribulations and we know that he's there if we need us it's confidential what we speak to him about and his passion for his work comes through he involves himself just not on a, a client level he goes above and beyond all of those things which we have never ever received before never come across that and we really appreciate how much in time and effort and makes us feel human not just numbers coming from multiple yes multiple minority statuses for being autistic I experienced ableism and internalized ableism. For being gay, I experienced homophobia and internalized homophobia. For being Indian, I experienced racism and internalized racism. For being a darker Indian, I experienced colorism and internalized colorism. This is just four identities i have told you there's a lot more therefore my experiences of oppression racism prejudice homophobia ableism colorism and etc warranted me to pursue further in my studies because i felt the need to speak up you know something, prior to receiving my qualifications to enable me professional recognition to work in the scope of a developmental educator, I was always a DE. I've always been a DE. There's one person I would like to name and really emphasize the person's quality, the person's embodiment and the person's character. And this person was the chair of the DEAI, Jose. Jose has been instrumental to my personal and professional life. Being a DE is never easy because when you fight for justices, when you fight for human rights, you sometimes can find yourselves in a compromised position. I always tend to find myself in a compromised position because I speak up and I expose bad behaviors, but sometimes the consequences that follow is not always favorable. However, justice will always prevail and liars will always be exposed. My approach to life is now, not why me, but try me. I would like to conclude by saying, 
a monumental thank you to all my supporters and followers out there. You all have been beautiful. Thank you for giving me the inspiration to continue doing what I love the most. Onwards and upwards. Love you all, Rish.